the um to help that move this over a bit so it's still some blood emitting. So this frame is too far over. This frame looks good. This frame is too high. Now if we notice that if we keep um, keyframing it to where his neck is, it sort of looks like this blood is, although that was spawned earlier, kind of looks uh, like it's in the, in the wrong position here. Um, so what we might do is actually move the, um, start to move the blood out of, um, lower down so that um, we're not getting all that blood starting to spurt out from, it kind of looks like it's from behind his helmet. That's looking better. Let me turn this layer on and see what, where the blood's sort of coming from. And I'll sort of um, clean it up a little bit. But no blood is emitting by that point, so it doesn't matter too much. Let's turn that off and see what we've got. might actually have another extra frame here. Kind of looks like it's uh, too far out at the moment. It needs to look like it's spawning from his neck. We'll sort of help that by fixing previous keyframes. Now it looks like it's coming out of his neck, which looks good. It looks like a lot of blood there, <laughs> um, but we're going to be changing the uh, color of the blood to sort of help it blend a little bit better. So, but the main thing of getting this blood to look good is the trying to master the position of the producer, which is very difficult to do. Looks like it's too high at the moment. Doesn't look like it's coming from where the sword was. That's looking better. Still does look like it's a bit high. I want it to look like it's meeting right where the sword is. Oops. Now it does look too low because at the end where this last bit of blood comes out, that really should be coming from his neck. It wouldn't be coming from his shoulder. So try and amend the two together. All right, that's looking good. 
I might do a radial blur to give it some motion blur. And I'll set the center to the producer because it sort of knows where it's coming from. And I'll set that to instead of low, high, and so spin, zoom. Kind of looks like it's going across too quick. I want to sort of lag behind the sword um, as the blood wouldn't be coming out that quick. Maybe even a bit more. Yeah, that looks cool. Kind of looks like it's a bit too much at the start. Might move that. And the original frame actually wanted to start up here, where the sword hits him. Oh, but that's going to ruin the second frame. I wanted to give it the appearance that he actually, although Gandalf just kind of hits him and then never actually touches him again, I want it to look like it's sort of made a cutting uh, effect. Gandalf's actually started chopping him up here, and then he's carried it all the way through from one side of his body to the other. And that's what we're getting now. Alright, so let's work on the color of this blood. And one way we can get some extra detail is actually instead of using the uh, this solid here, we can actually duplicate the um, the the background footage and uh, copy these effects onto here. So I'll just copy both of these and I'll grab the very start frame, paste them onto here, and I'll turn off the solid. And we'll see here that we're getting some extra quality here um, because it's instead of just being a solid, it's uh, it's got some um, you know this footage has uh, varying luminance and color values, so we're getting some extra detail in here, which is cool. So I don't need this blood anymore. And what I might do is uh, change the hue and saturation. And instead I'll uh, check colorize. And let me see with these features, but we get these. And oh, it's sort of a bloody red. And make it nice and dark. By default, I think it sets it to a nice red color. And there we're getting some additional detail in our blood, which is cool. Um, radial blur, I need to bump that up because in areas um, where there's actually not much spray at all, um, there's pretty much no blur, so let's double that. And uh, for the first frame, oh, it's actually parented, but hmm, I'm wondering whether we should unparent it and customize it. I don't think it would be too noticeable for the start frame. No, it's not too noticeable. What I also want to do is then duplicate this blood here and uh, add a fast blur. And sort of create a mist. So the this one is the um, the main blood, but this will be sort of like a, a very fine spray. And this will be blurred. If we don't blur it enough, we get this weird looking uh, type thing. I'll just increase the light so we can see it. We get this weird look, but if we take it even further, we get a nice fine spray. And I might put that underneath. 
and to get a sort of some sort of um, less see we can sort of see the blood here if I zoom in when it's over some dark areas which we wouldn't normally be getting I'll um, I'll do a lumen map so duplicate this and then this will lumen map it uh, and then I will add the levels to that layer to sort of lighten it up so we can get some more of the blood and that was before that's after it's not uh, not too much of a difference but um, maybe that's because I changed these uh, so much sort of gives us some variation and um, I think the final thing to sort of sell the effect is to add some sound effects because the sound effect that this one uh, currently has it sounds like Gandalf's hitting a pinata with a baseball bat so we need to get a nice uh, sword cutting sound effect. So I've added some sound effects here. This is from a game called Stronghold. It's called Sword Cutting uh, Sound Effect. Yeah, that's pretty much the end of the tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. I look forward to seeing some uh, 300 style blood effects that you guys come up with. Uh, if you do, you can message me on YouTube and send me a link. Uh, my account is James Whiffen VFX. Thanks for watching. <laughs>